Okay, so we've stopped at a uh, outcrop along the Burma Road in Southwest Montana with my rocks and minerals class. And they're looking at a formation of rock that you can see has columns in it, um, what we call columnar joining. Uh, this is cooling fractures that occur in a lava flow. And uh, this lava flow is dated at 46 million years. It's, the, uh, it's a very dark um, lava flow, uh, what we call mafic, um, formed of minerals like pyroxene. And uh, it is uh, a uh, indication of the beginning of extension in southwest Montana and partial melt of the mantle producing uh, lava flows of basalt. And as the basalt flows came down river valleys, it cooled, they contracted from the top down and the bottom up, and it created columns, what we call columnar joining. And so the students are over there trying to figure out what the rock type is. We'll walk over and look at them close up. The graphic shows the distribution of Eocene volcanic rocks in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, including the Dillon Volcanics in southwest Montana. The Dillon Volcanic Rocks show a geochemical transition from felsic, rhyolite, dacite, to mafic rocks like basalt, like the Black Mountain Basalt. The chemical transition is interpreted by some geologists as a tectonic transition in western Montana from a subduction zone volcanic arc to crustal extension. Now the details are definitely debated, but it might be that the Fairlawn Plate extended eastward to the point where it broke off or rolled back and sunk into the mantle, causing partially melted mantle to rise and extrude as basalt, like the Black Mountain basalt flow did 46 million years ago. All right, so up close you can see this is a basalt. And the basalt's got some phenocrysts in it, some early form crystals that were formed down in the magma chamber and then brought up with the lava flow as it extruded out onto the surface. Those are those lighter colored grains that you see in the basalt. Um, a lot of them are olivine crystals. Um, uh, basalt forms through the partial melt of mantle peridotite, um, which contains pyroxene and calcium plagioclase and olivine. And then the basalt partially melts through a reduction in pressure in this case, uh, uh, as the crust of the earth in Montana was pulled apart, divergence. And that reduction in pressure resulted in partial melt of the mantle, which mel melted mostly pyroxene and calcium plagioclase, and uh, also brought some of the olivine crystals with it. So this deposit, uh, what's called the Block Mountain Basalt Flow, uh, is an indication of the beginning of extension in southwest Montana about 46 million years ago. The graphic shows how thinning of the continental crust results in reducing pressure on the underlying mantle. And that reduction in pressure allows minerals that are in the solid state to go into the liquid state or melt. And they rise up and extrude out onto the surface. In this case, pyroxene and calcium plagioclase melt from the mantle peridotite, uh, rise up, extrude out onto the surface, and form basalt like the Block Mountain basalt flow did 46 million years ago. The Black Mountain basalt flow rests on top of folded and thrust faulted rocks of the uh, Cretaceous fold and thrust belt in southwest Montana. Those rocks are more easily eroded because they are not as resistant as that hard basalt. As a result, the Black Mountain basalt flow forms the topographic high in the region 
So what was once the topographic low, a basalt flow that went down a river valley, it's now the topographic high in the region. As always, thanks for tuning in to Montana Geology with the Rock Doctor. Until next time, take care.